excited to introduce you to our next guest from the jungles of Paraguay to the corporate stages around the world. This man will make the impossible possible. He makes things disappear and reappear. And if we get this right, we will all still be here by the end of this segment. I'd like to introduce you to Ken Sky. Welcome, Ken. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much, Lauren, and it's my pleasure to be on, and it's nice to meet you as well, Amy. And It's wonderful to meet you, and we're, I'm so excited to learn about your story. First, where were you born in the jungles of Paraguay? Well, I can show you. I was actually born right there. In the <laughs> oh. middle. It's the heart of South America, basically. Uh-huh. So if you went right to the center, there's a tiny little country called Paraguay, and you might imagine or picture Mowgli jump, uh, jumping through the, the, the tall trees. It wasn't like that at all. Uh, it's much more like a smaller bush type land. But I do have a photo that I can show you. And it's right here. That's actually a picture of my uncle teaching me how to walk. And you will notice if you, uh, if you can watch closely, I was barefoot. And this is from a time in my life when um, I grew up very humbly. We actually lived in a barn of somebody else's house for a while. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's how I grew up. That's my, where that's I came from. Did, did you enjoy living in Paraguay? Did you enjoy the, the bush and the remote area? I did. And I think if you don't know what you're missing or not missing, mm-hmm. then you're not missing it. Mm-hmm. So I grew up very happy and I, did, I never had Legos. I would use corn cob Like after you take the corn off, I would use those to make people from or berries from the from the bush and take uh, the thorns from cactuses to put poke in as as legs. And that's how I would make my own animals. And we would just on the ground and the dirt, we would push the dirt together to shape houses where all all the people could live in that we made. And it's one of the happiest memories of my life. Oh, that's amazing. So what brought you here to the United States? I'm actually based in Winnipeg, Canada right now. Canada. And I came here in 2003. And the reason I came here is because, well, first of all, ever since I was a child, I always dreamt of seeing the world. I thought there's got to be more out there. And uh, I can actually show you a little story on how I got to this point here. So it starts off with me crawling in the dirt. You didn't crawl from Paraguay to Canada. No, I didn't. <laughs> but this is kinda like I am my... having all of these pictures. This is so <laughs> great. This is what led up to it. So one night, I'm about five years old, and uh, we're sitting around a bonfire. We'll just light that here. And uh, I was talking to my mom, and I asked her, how do I write a letter in the sand or in the dirt? And she'd teach me. She'd show me this is how you write a letter and then another one and then this is how you write a word and when that happened i had looked up at her and said mom when i sorry about that let's just get there mom (laughs) when i grow up i want to be a teacher and so that's where the journey started and but before we get to that point um we would we would many times sit around the bonfires and we'd many times look up at the sky and my dad would say see that that's a satellite and that's an airplane. And he would teach me the differences. And he would said, one day we're going to be on an airplane flying all the way to Canada. And that was our dream. And then before we knew it, the Canadian government said, because you have ancestors from Canada who moved to Paraguay, you can become a Canadian citizen. And how exciting was that? Oh, wow. so We that's became amazing. Canadian citizens. Wow. But there was a condition to it. You have to live in Canada for an entire year before you turn 28. Otherwise, you'll lose it. Well, I didn't want to let that opportunity miss. So in 2003, I moved to Canada with my wife, two suitcases and $100. Wow. Wow. And now... Let's just go back to our pivot stories, because listening to all of your pivots, you went from dreaming of being a teacher to acting and on to magic and comedy and mind reading. I mean, you have pivoted your whole life 
pretty much halfway around the globe. So now you're showing us, and Amy commented on all these great pictures and visuals that are popping up on the screens that we're loving so much to tell your story. Jump us forward now to where you are and what you're doing. So, yeah, I, I do have to just jump back one more time because it is important for the pivot. Um, my dad uh, broke the news to me when I was in high school, um, about grade nine. He said, you know what? We're going to have to get you out of school and help out on the farm because mm -hmm. we simply can't afford to send you to school. But I didn't want to, to miss out on uh, the chance to become a teacher. So I said, I'll do whatever it takes. So I did jobs. I was a shoemaker. I was a uh, mesh wire maker. I was a charcoal maker. I drove a tractor delivering potable water to people during school time. And I would take my books with me and study for exams as the tank was filled up. And so I worked all through high school and college so I could, I could pursue my dream. But my favorite job of all of those was when I worked as a radio sound engineer. Late nights and doing all the technical things. And back when I did this, I still had to wind the tape, cassette tapes to the right spot in a song, hit play, and it would start playing just a few seconds before the song started and then fade in and out the different tracks. So all of those things kind of taught me a bunch of different skills. And for me, it was just always, I'm doing what I need to do to where I want to get. So when I came to Canada, I didn't speak English in 2003 and there was no place for me to get a job, but I got a job because I had learned computer skills. So technology helped me with that big pivot into this new country. And because I spoke Spanish, I was able to figure out the meanings of the menus on a computer when they gave me this test. So I passed with flying colors and I got a job because of my tech skills. So that was a major element that helped me pivot into this new world. Mm. And since I was a child, there was always, so, I mean, I do have a, a little something here that I could show you kind of to talk about the dreams where that whole journey goes on to where I'm here now. If you'd like to see it, I'll be happy show to show us. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. So what an amazing young boy you were to be able to see your, the vision beyond what you knew and know what you wanted and go get it and do whatever it took to get there. I'm just absolutely amazed. Your parents must be so proud. Well, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate that. So let's bring out some bubbles because bubbles to me are like dreams. <laughs> Not just because they burst so many times. So let's make some bubbles. Aren't they amazing? I always love bubbles. I don't know anybody who doesn't love bubbles. No, to me, a bubble is a dream. And I, I've been wanting to be many things. One of my first dreams, like I said, was to be a teacher. And I did. I became a teacher. And ever since I went to school, I loved the stage. We'd have school plays. And there was a new dream born that I tried to catch. And that was to be a rock star. I wanted to be a rock star and I wanted to be an actor because I saw these movies and I thought, how cool would it be to tell your story in the most amazing way? So I kept pursuing all these dreams and I never had enough time in a day. And many times a dream would burst just like that. But if there's one thing that I learned as a young child is to never give up because that's when you lose. You can only win if you get up again. Until you catch that dream. So when I came to Canada, I had a chance to first start off as a background actor. So I was on set and that was one of small little victories for me. I caught one of those dreams. And then I got a role as a magician in a movie. What I learned is over all these times is because I never gave up on any of those dreams, some of them came true, but I didn't always even realize that they had come true. Because before I knew it, I was performing on a stage. I was playing the guitar, I was singing, I was doing a concert. And I was thinking, wait a minute, I might not be a rock star, but look at this crowd of people having a great time because of what we're experiencing together. And I'm part of this. 
And when my son was born in 2005 and we spent a lot of time at the hospital, a magician came by and he did some magic up close and personal for me. Well, for him. But it spoke to me much stronger than I ever imagined. And that's how the journey for me into magic was born. Does that kind of answer your question? Oh my gosh, like, I, this is amazing. <laughs> oh, it is Thank it's you. so fun. I can, I, it's so fun to be able to um, really visualize what you were experiencing and, and understand that. And I agree with you so much. I remember, um, who was it that said, success is moving from failure to failure with any, without any loss of enthusiasm. And I loved what you said about sometimes our dreams are going to burst and sometimes they're not. But what you can't ever do is give up. And, and uh, what an amazing, amazing story. Thank so you. Can, I tell, can I ask you more then about the pivots that you've made recently? And what are you doing now? Yes, yeah, so I'm a, a speaker and magician. So what I do is I, I travel and I perform at corporate events, at trade shows. And so one of my recent highlights was uh, I was in Las Vegas in February performing on a big trade show floor. And uh, so I use magic as a tool to present um, a company and their products and so in, a, in a way where people can remember the, the benefits of the product. And so what I've been doing ever since we weren't able to travel anymore, when we put all of those um, activities on pause, is I looked at, so the first thing was, okay, I can't do what I'm doing now. So what am I going to do next? So like instantly my instinct went to what can I do, not what can't I do. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, I've done computer stuff for a while. I, I even used to own a software company some years ago. So I thought, how can I take what I do on stage and bring it to the virtual stage? Mm. And so I saw a lot of people that jumped on it. There was magicians who jumped on and they did magic shows over Zoom. And I looked at it and I didn't like it because it was this yellow faced, unengaging experience that I thought, if I'm doing this, I'm going to make this more engaging. So I started digging in hours and hours and hours. The first video I made was just a minute and a half video. I spent 50 hours on it just to make it stand out from other people's videos. And it got me attention. So people, when they saw what I did, they, they also saw, okay, so he's not doing the standard thing. He's going, like he's taking things to a new level. And for me, it was kind of like, that's what I do. Mm -hmm. But then I noticed that I was getting more and more attention of uh, people who were looking up, okay, I'm gonna pay attention to what Ken is doing. So when I finally came out with performing on, on a virtual stage, I had elements in it that just, I think, make things more engaging. I mean, you've seen it in the beginning of the presentation. So when you pull things up into the screen and the way things look, uh, I mean, there's so many things that are important to pivot to the stage. And I call this process virtualizing. So I virtualized my show and because I can't just take what I do on stage, stand in front of the camera and do the same thing. It mm -hmm. just does not work. Right. So I had to take little elements. I had to scale my illusions down and I could bring in some um, effects as well. So they're not camera effects that I use to perform the magic, but they're elements that enhance the stories, hopefully. Mm -hmm. So the whole purpose here is to make everyone feel like they're in the front row of your show, even though you're not physically there, but to get that same level of engagement. And I know that as you've gone through the story and shown us the visuals, our reaction is just the same. Like, wow, this is kind of like being there. Yes. So are you, are you doing this um, on the regular or have you pivoted yet again because I know you've gotten a lot of interest from people who want to know how to do what you're doing. Yeah, so I do, I do both. I do perform uh, virtual shows and uh, I've been doing some consulting for companies that are looking into doing a virtual gala and how can you make a virtual gala an experience? And, and you mentioned that everybody has a front row seat from the comforts of their own home. So people that might not be able to travel because whatever the reason is, uh, but just, I just picture a grandmother sitting 
on a couch next to her, her grandchild with the iPad. And together, these two people now have an experience and they're connected closer to the artist than they ever might have been able to if they went to a live event. Mm. So if we pivot this way, if we focus on the things we can do and forget then the things we can't do kind of become, they, they fade away. I think, I think if there's one theme that I keep hearing over and over again for what makes the difference between someone who, who is successful and someone who is not during this time in reinventing themselves, it's exactly what you said. It's taking what you can do and looking at all the opportunities from within it. And I don't know any, I've never heard of anyone be able to do what you've done so many times and be so successful at so many things. It's incredible. Well, thank you. I it's an that. amazing story. And I just have to ask, because I know Amy's thinking it, so I'm going to say it. Can you do some magic for us? I yeah, can. Please. <laughs> of course I can. So the question that we just talked about is, what can we do and forget about what we can do? So, Because I could be stuck on, I want to travel and see the world. Oh, look, you're South America. Uh, Maybe I'm focused on all the distances between us. Maybe I'm, I'm really just kind of feeling that I'm missing out on life. But if we focus on what can we do? And to be honest, Lauren, if it wasn't for a current situation, we probably wouldn't have met. And I met many amazing people all over the world. And it's because in many ways, I am now more connected than I ever was because through the internet, we're all connected. What? <laughs> oh my gosh. I hope that kind of visualizes what I'm talking about. Oh my gosh, that was amazing. <laughs> well done. Thank you so much. Thank you. So Ken, how can our viewers find you and how can they connect with you now since we're all about connecting? So the, the best way to connect with me is through my website, which should be showing up right there, kensky.com. And from there, you can get in touch by email or you can find my LinkedIn profile. And uh, I coach people, executives and artists to show themselves in the best light and to be engaging on screen. And so you've already seen, or you may be seen, I don't, I'm not sure if he's on yet, Freddy. So I was working with him. And so together we were able to create just amazing, engaging experiences. And that's what my final pivot has been to this point. Thank you so much for what you're doing for everyone. And I hope that you'll have the opportunity to do it for a whole lot more people as time goes on, because it does make magic for the rest of us to be able to show up more fully as who we are, and you seem to have nailed it. The, it's the marriage between the magic and the reality that allows us to connect through the screen. So thank you so much for what you're doing. Hey Lauren, it's my pleasure to be on here and it's a never ending journey. Every day I'm, I'm learning new things and I'm happy to share and help other people connect with their audiences. Thank you so much well, for having me on your show. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.